Hello, Avengers. It's me, Spenny McG. Now, Binbok reached out to me and said that they wanted to send me a controller for review. In today's video, we're going to do exactly that. Unbox, check it out, see what we like, maybe don't like about the controller. They're not paying me for this review, so all opinions will be my own. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, inside the box here, we have the Binbox Gemini Feature Switch Pro Controller. Here's a look at it at the back, underneath the slip cover. Inside, you can find the controller. Now, there is a USB C cable in here for charging. Set of instructions, we'll look at that in a moment. And here's the controller. It has a thin film over top of it here just to protect that front cover. All right, my friends, and now this is the controller completely unboxed. Uh, I did have to give it a little bit of a wipe now of fingerprints because I have used it for a few weeks to trial it and come back and let you know what I think of it. First things first, the clear portions here are pretty neat. You can see the actual rumble in there. This down here, this is actually the sensor for the HD rumble. We'll be exploring a little bit in the differences between the two, but just note you can see the two forms of rumble through that clear portion there. The rest here is just a bit of a shield over top, but you can see when you turn the controller on that it has built-in RGB lighting. Right there, you can see here we have like a green tint to it, and I can adjust that by pushing on the back here. There's a light button. This is the button here to set your M buttons here, your programmable buttons on the back here, and that's for your turbo, of course. And this will be adjusting the rumble. Again, we'll look at that shortly. Turning off my over light here. I'm just gonna quickly show you. You can toggle all these different colors here on the back here. You can see every time too, the vibrations going off in my thumbs here. But we have a lot of different options here, which is really great. This one's fantastic, it's the RGB. I killed all my extra lights because I want you to really be able to see this. So here, this is the flow of that RGB. So you'll see the primary color here and then it'll flow down the two sides. So again, now the purple will come down and the red's coming behind it and the yellow. Really cool. And now this other way of looking at it, if when I push the light button again, so now you'll see the red here flow over here and then it'll come down and then what you'll see is it actually will follow its way back up. And so now you've got like a cyclic motion type of thing as you see the red going back across the top again. So really cool feature there. And again, that's just an additional cool feature of the controller. I can change the settings too. So now you see it's kind of like a breathing where it brightens and then it starts to fade off again here and come back alive. So this one now too, with this breathing, how it comes and goes, but when the vibration actually goes, you'll see that it actually lights the controller back up every time the vibration kicks in. So on a game like this, it's going to be pretty continuous. You can see when it starts to actually fade off here, when I fire and the vibration kicks in, you see it glows again right away. Kind of a neat feature. Okay, so other impressions with the controller. You can see here, this is kind of uh, textured. It's not super sticky rubbery, but it's textured. And you know what? Like, I feel it. I know some people say they don't really feel like uh, the divots or something. All these little, like, triangle hashes here are meant to be your up, down, left, right. So it does give you a good tactile feel, I'd say. Buttons feel great. Of course, the B here looks like the, kind of like the bin box symbol itself there. Your bumpers, your triggers, they feel well. And of course, what's the primary feature of these sticks? Hall effect. So again, old school styling here, meaning because we're using magnetic sensory here, these aren't going to break down and we're not going to suddenly get drift later on. Cool that these use the Hall effect joysticks. I see a lot more companies jumping on that now, given the amount of problems we've seen with the Joy-Cons, some Xbox controllers, some PlayStation controllers controller does have six axis built into it so it does have the motion control again nice game here to kind of demo that on is this kirby tilt and tumble now one feature you may notice on this right away is that directional pad and of course a lot of them generally have the carved in pad some of them have like that kind of up swoop this kind of has a bit of that concave shape to it too but interestingly it's kind of you can basically pop that right out and see that there's sensors here. They say that they use this though, however, because it's an eight-way directional, not 
four-way directional only. You can see that's kind of a slidey joystick in that sense, but you know what? Overall, I didn't have too many issues using it. I thought I would have more issues, let's say that, than what I actually did. So for example, I didn't find there was many issues here playing platforming games such as this one here, Rafa's World. No issues here using it for Mario Bros. In fact, no issue here playing some Mega Man with the old Blue Bomber himself. In fact, if I'm going to encounter an area like this, I can hold down the turbo, hold down my Y button, and in this case here, set it to turbo and get some shots going off. Hey, free guy. Everybody remembers playing games like this, shooting and getting to rock your thumb. But if you don't like that, again, that's where I can even now hold down the M button and push Y and then the M1 here. Now my shots are firing turbo, the Y button triggered by the back here. Now I can hold the controller like so and focus my thumb on jump only. In fact, it sure helps equalize things against the villains. No chance. So I get it's kind of a weird D-pad, but from what you've seen so far, I haven't had many issues. Not all third-party controllers can do this, but yes, if you have the controller already synced, you can wake your Nintendo Switch up. So you can see right away there that it does have the rumble feature set. When I pull down the trigger. So again, the rumble's going crazy here. You can see it again if you weren't looking through the controller itself. See the vibration going off? So what happens then if I go ahead and I set this to the HD rumble? It's just a switch on the back. You can actually turn the rumble off altogether. So if you aren't a big rumble fan, that's a nice feature for you right there. But here, I'm going to put it over here, and it's going to use these little rumble guys down here. You can hear it's much more muted because this game wasn't designed with that in mind. So more so in games like Smash Bros is where you're actually going to really feel that HD rumble, which again is kind of Nintendo's actual first party type game. So you get, you just, you feel it differently. You know it's different here. It's not the best way for me to hold this controller, but you can hear how the DHD rumble is going off. And that does just feel more like akin to when you're using a set of Joy-Cons here. Okay, now let's adjust that and try that again. You can hear right away the difference between HD rumble and actual rumble. But if it's what you're used to with a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con type controller, anything that's really first party that's going to super utilize that, it's neat that they're already incorporating this in. And basically, this is one of the first third party controllers to do that. One thing here, this is for my chum Drew over at Inside the Game. He's always complained that Nintendo Switch controllers just can't be turned off. Typically, you got to go here and go to your controllers and then change the grip order and then you can disable them or whatever. So if someone's playing like Smash with you here and they just want to drop out, they don't enter the next round, but the controller will just stay on. Some of them will eventually, after a set amount of period of time, will just turn off, but no other controller will unless you exit and go to the screen. This one here actually has a button right on top. So I just push the button down and the controller, you see the lights go off. It's completely inactive. I push a button there. You can see it's searching. It found itself number one. We can resume. I right, hit the button again. Turn it off. I'm not moving anything here. Again, hit the home button. Searching again. First player connects. And then all of a sudden we're back in the game. So that's also a, f a feature I figure that's worth noting here because I have yet to really see any controller, even the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, 
have that capability to just turn itself off. I thought that was pretty innovative in its own sense. So again, my friends, this is the Binbok Gemini Feature Pro Controller. The controller has Hall Effect joysticks to avoid getting drift in the future. Speaking of drift, watch me drift that corner. That's the only time you want to see drift. Remember that the controller has rumble and it has HD rumble. So when you're playing some of those Nintendo design games that have the HD rumble kind of by design, that's where you're going to feel just that little bit of sensory such as here in Mario Kart. Or if you want to get the full time rumble, we've got that too. It has turbo, it has motion control. It's got this beautiful RGB lighting. I know the eight way directional pad may be a little bit different than what you're accustomed to, but from what I've shown you here, I don't have really any complaints with it. And remember my friends, I'm getting old. I've been gaming since the eighties on directional pads. So if I can get through with this, I'm sure you won't find any real notable issues. And holy moly, we actually can turn the controller off with a button on top. So cool to see. Nice transparent inside there. I like the controller a lot. It doesn't have NFC for Amiibos, but that's pretty much the only feature that we might be short. Programmable buttons even on the back here, ready to use. Let me know what you think of this controller. If you're interested in picking one up, I'll have affiliated links in the comments below. Again, I am not paid by Binbok for this. Binbok just sent me this. So again, special thanks to them for reaching out. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing as it always helps grow my channel. I hope you're as happy as this guy is. Till I see you guys again soon, please take care. Be good to each other. Bye now.